All right, welcome to this short second video on bonds. If you didn't see the first video, go search for it. It discusses bonds in the bigger context of the financial system and sort of how to think about bonds. Uh, in this video, what we're gonna do is focus on this equation that we have right here, the uh, PB equals CF over one plus I plus CF over one plus I squared plus dot, 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 and so on. And this equation's confusing because we see it written out a lot, um, but it seems like it's used in different ways in different contexts. And I think the best way to think of it is that because it's used in different ways in different contexts, it's really not one equation, it's really two equations. So what we're gonna do is kind of grab it and delete it. And our goal in this video is to ask the two types of questions you would ask about bonds and then set up an equation which is really just a form of this one equation to solve each of these to those two uh, to answer each of those two questions so we'll start off by listing our two questions one question could be and this is clearly then before the sale um, how much is the bond worth so I'll use bad like bad grammar here and just say how much bond worth and before the sale, this is a good question to ask because, you know, you're going to walk into the market and you're going to see the prices of the different goods and the bond. And, you know, you go into, you know, stop and shop and you see a bond on the, on the rack just like next to the Doritos. And you're like, well, this bond costs $10. I can see the price tag on it. Is it worth $10? Should I buy it? Is it, is it a good value? And uh, we'll set up an equation to help you figure that out. The second question we could ask is really more relevant after the sale or after the purchase. Let me say purchase. Uh, and this is like you've purchased a bond. And we said in the last video that when you sell bonds, you're borrowing money. It's like taking out a loan. So it stands to reason that if you buy bonds, that's like making a loan. Well, if you made a loan, you would know the interest rate. So you would know how much like interest roughly that tells you how much interest these people are paying you. Like they're paying you 6% interest on the, on, on the loan. Well, after you've bought this bond, it would be a reasonable thing to ask, well, how much interest am I making from this bond? It's essentially a loan. So it must have some equivalent of an interest rate. Uh, and that equivalent of the interest rate we call the yield. So how much interest am I making? What is the yield? But we'll write it as how much interest am I making? We'll say earning. I just don't want to, uh, I don't want to set you up to think you're doing anything if you get a job in finance. You know, you're, you'll earn a lot, but you might not do anything for the world. So the, the language is important. All right, so the, let's start with the before the sale question. We, we, we are looking at a bond. We're about to head into the market. We know the bond's coupon. We know its face value. We know it's a 5% coupon bond. We know it has a face value of $1,000. We know that it's a, it matures in 10 years, so the maturity is 10 years from now. So it's very clear what we will get if we buy the bond. We just need to decide what is that worth. You know, I'm going to get a $50 coupon every year for the next 10 years, and I'm going to get the $1,000 in 10 years. Well, what is all that future money worth? And hopefully it was a little bit of a clue when I said future money that has a future value that what I really am trying to do here they, is, is figure out the present value of all those future payments. The bond's value, what I, what, I, what I should be willing to pay for it, so I'll say bond's value, is just the PDV of all those payments. If I just take that first coupon and discount it, so that first coupon is CF dollars, $50 in the case I was describing, and then I discount it because it's paid a year from now, so I divide by one plus I, um, and then repeat for the second coupon, CF, two years from now, and then just do that for each of the coupons. So my last coupon will be T years from now, and then I'll get the face value on top of that, so I'll get discount that face value too. This is really what the bond's worth. I just add up all the discounted coupons, and then I add the discounted face value, and that's roughly what I should be willing to pay for the bond. Um, in a market in equilibrium, presumably the bond will sell for approximately what it's worth. So to a really close approximation, this bond's value should also match up with its price. But that's not really the point of the, the, when I asked this question. I didn't want to know what is the price of the bond. I wanted to know what is it worth 
what should I what should I be willing to pay for it? If I owned it, what should I be willing to sell it for? Um, and that's one way of approaching the bond and using this formula. So now we'll move on to the second question. The second question we're usually going to be asking after we bought the bond, it's how much interest am I earning on this bond? I've already bought it. I decided it was worth it. And now I want to know how much interest I'm earning on it. What you'd think we'd get is an equation that says like I, the yield, equals blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, the way the math works out is that we actually can't get like a nice simple equation or even a complicated equation that tells us how to calculate I directly. All we can do is set up an equation with our givens, things we know, and then solve for it indirectly. So our givens in the second context is we've already purchased the bond, so we know its sales price. Um, because we're normal people, we also figured out ahead of time what coupon it's going to pay us and what the face value was and what the maturity is. So we know P, B, C, F, and T. And if we can set up an equation involving these guys and the yield, we'll be able to solve for the yield because the yield will be the only thing that we don't know. And the natural equation to set up since we're trying to solve for like the yield and the interest rate is the one we had at the beginning of this lecture. P, B equals CF over one plus I uh, plus the second discounted coupon and so on. But now you can see the point of setting up this equation in this second context is no longer to plug in I and C and F and solve for the bond's value. It's to plug in P and C and F and T. I guess you'll need to plug in T and get the bond's yield to solve indirectly for I. So let me just make a note here. Solve indirectly for I, the yield. All right. So that's basically the two different cases in which you'd use this equation. Now you can see that it's really just one equation. But the first context is, how much is it worth? You plug in C and I and F and T on the right-hand side, and you get the bonds value on the left. The second case is, you don't know the yield, so you can't plug that in. But you know the price and the coupon and the face value and the T. So you plug all those in into this second equation right here, and then you solve for I. Um, and when I say you solve for I, this equation is really complicated. So you plug it into Wolfram Alpha and it solves for I. And you did that a little bit on the P set. So um, you won't have to do a complicated calculation like that on the test. You don't get Wolfram Alpha and the internet on the test. Um, thanks for watching.